Hi everyone, welcome to day 20 of our 90 days of living inside the vulnerable together. I appreciate you being here. Hopefully you'll be here long after our 90 days are up. But for now, we are practicing together living authentically inside our spaces of vulnerability, understanding that those vulnerabilities may change as we grow and evolve and we may ebb and flow through this process. So yesterday I talked about core values and aligning our core values, those things that are most important to us with our daily tasks and ensuring that those daily tasks have our core values built into them. So if I'm going to go do X, Y, Z, I'm also going to bring my core values into it and ensure that they align with the task I'm going to do. So I'm not going to sign up to do something that doesn't that does not, pardon me, align with my own core values. Now I'm going to tie some of that into being inside the vulnerable. So vulnerabilities are certainly things that can ebb and flow as well. And I want you to, I'm going to challenge you to, to think a little bit outside the box here and see how our vulnerabilities alter depending on our situation. So depending on the task. So I could be perfectly fine, feel perfectly safe right here. I'm in my office. This is where I'm comfortable, right? No vulnerabilities right here, except for maybe being on camera and I just stumbled a couple of words a moment back. Um, those are imperfections. That's human. But let's say somebody walks into my office. My office is in my home. So is this somebody I know or somebody I don't know? That might change. So if somebody I know walks into my office, my vulnerable moment becomes, ooh, wait a minute, I'm on camera, I'm recording. Do I turn and give them attention? Do I, like now I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable because I have to pause and fix something, address something, you know. How I view the world from this space right here is basically my vulnerabilities, right? So yesterday I talked about doing tasks throughout our day. Um, you know, if one of my tasks is going to the bank and I've never walked into a bank before, I might feel a little vulnerable walking into a bank. <laughs> you know, it's such a mundane thing, but what if I've never been to this bank? What if I don't know where it is? What if it's closed? What if, you know, because of where we are in the world, they require a mask and I don't have mine in my car. And, and then I start asking all those what if questions. So our vulnerabilities are almost a, a, a view for us to see the world through our own individual personal lens. And we tend to see through this lens of our core values, which is the core of who we are, the things that matter most, those things that were instilled in, in us as we were growing up, or sometimes those are the values that are different from how they were when we were growing up because sometimes we go in a different direction. Um, maybe our parents instilled these values and we don't necessarily agree with those and so we think something else should be on the top. So that view through this lens is those core values and the vulnerabilities where we are. So loving ourselves and, and acknowledging and being aware and mindful of exactly where we are. Okay, so what does that lens look like? As we go through these day-to-day -day tasks, yesterday I asked you to write down your you know, top five or handful of top core values and plan out your day or your week or go through your day with each task you already have on your calendar and see how those things align with your core values. Today I'm asking you to do that again, but also feel your vulnerabilities ebb and flow with each task. I can tell you as a mom, like yesterday, I think I 
told the story yesterday about my kids when they were younger in those elementary years. Um, one of the tasks I disliked the most, I was going to say detested and despised, and I brought that down a little bit to disliked the most was school pickup in the afternoon when they were in elementary school, all three kids in elementary school. It was not my most favorite time of day. And I eventually got to the point where they were old enough that they could just come to the car. So I would park the car or I would do the line and not get out of my car. But when they were younger, I used to have to park the car and get out and walk. And it for me, it was, you might as well have put me, you know, naked on a fashion runway and, and told me to walk. The whole world is watching. You're on TV. Everybody wants to see what you're wearing. Everybody wants to see your makeup. Everybody wants to know if you napped. Everybody wants to know what you've eaten today. Everybody wants to judge you. So go ahead and do the walk. I hated it. I hated it. I would always look for a friendly face and go to that friend or acquaintance and talk. But I personally hated the groups of women that always felt like I didn't belong. It was my most vulnerable moment of every day for the better part of 10 to 12 years was school pick up in the afternoon with my kids. It's pretty sad, huh? But those vulnerabilities ebb and flow. They come and go. So that was just one task. Before I left the house, I may have been with a friend. I may have been with neighbors. I may have been by myself. I may have felt great. I may not have felt very vulnerable at all. And then suddenly I go into this new space doing this task that I need to do. And suddenly I'm overwhelmed feeling vulnerable and unsafe and maybe insecure and taking a risk every time I walk up to a group of, of women and say, hello, <laughs> I'm here to get my kid too. We have that in common. You know, like that was always, that's how I felt. I, was, that's, I felt like that was always my luck was not genuine at all, right? Um, very unstable environment. And then I would go home with my kids or maybe I would go to gymnastics or swimming or whatever is next and there would be a completely different sense of vulnerabilities. So we live inside the vulnerable and we kind of weave in and out depending on our tasks. So our most vulnerable moment might be a difficult conversation we have to have with our partner or our children or our best friend or our coworkers or boss. And that might weigh heavy on us all day until the conversation is over and it may weigh heavy on us afterwards. But how we live in that moment really helps us define how we view the world. Now, bring in those core values. We're having those difficult conversations. I'm walking up to a random group of women standing around at school waiting for their kids. And, you know, how can I bring in my core values to embrace that vulnerable moment and make it better for me and for those around me? So that's kind of our challenge today is repeat yesterday. Think of those core values and how we can bring those core values into our daily calendar, right? Are we doing things that align with our core values? So let me throw back that school example. I would avoid the women that were catty and gossiping, and we all know they exist. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not naming names. But I would try to avoid those groups that I knew were talking but of course, you know, what made me vulnerable was I always felt like they were probably talking about me. I don't know now. Now I don't care because the, my lens 10 years later is very different from my lens when I was right there and felt like I didn't belong. But those 
catty, gossipy behaviors did not align with my core values, right? So if I had walked into those conversations and almost forced myself to belong, that task of picking up my kids from school and choosing to put myself in a position with women who didn't, whose behaviors didn't align with, with my core values would have made me even more vulnerable because not only did I feel like I didn't belong, but I actually didn't belong because the activity going on didn't align with my core values. So, sorry, I'm getting repetitive. Let me repeat it again. Repeat yesterday. Think of those top core values. Think of your calendar. Think of your tasks you have to do. And then to piggyback on that for today and for the tasks for the rest of the week, if you can, Think about which of those tasks makes you feel the most vulnerable and then try to tie in your core values into that task and create your bubble of safety. Accept yourself exactly where you are. I am vulnerable in this moment. Ten years later, I can tell you I would have rather have stood off all by myself not belonging than to try to blend into a group of people who didn't align with my values. And sometimes it's really hard to see when you're in that moment. And maybe that's just emotional growth that I've had. Maybe it's age. You know, as we get older, we're like, I care less about what people think than I, than I did before. Um, and, and maybe it's also that I'm not doing that today because we also worry about what our kids get and what they need. Are they getting what they need? Are these parents of our kids friends? So there's some layers there as well. But I would say today, I would tell that mom that I was 10 years ago or more, don't worry about walking into those groups and belonging because you're going to feel more vulnerable standing with them, not belonging, but looking like maybe you do from the outside. And you're, you're going to feel more vulnerable because their values, the, va the core values of that task, of that activity don't align with your own. You will feel better if you just stand off by yourself and keep your core values intact. You'll feel less vulnerable. Try it. It's interesting. I'm a big believer in community. Don't get me wrong. So not everybody's like that. That's a Maybe it's a poor example. Maybe it sounds very judgmental. But it is a, an honest space where I was um, for a lot of reasons. I never really fit into the moms groups that Rainbow Flag is one of them. Um, for a lot of reasons, I, I never fit into these these groups, um, and that was a big vulnerable space for me. There there were certainly women that I pulled out of those groups that I became really great friends with who adore me and accept me and love me um, exactly where I am. But uh, that's always been one of those vulnerable spaces for me is school events with other moms and. It's one of those things that you have to do. So think about your tasks, align your core values with your vulnerabilities. And um, clearly somebody's walking past my house again. Like they do this every day. I don't know why they walk past my house. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, she, loves, she loves it when dogs walk past. She tries to invite them over to play. Um, align your tasks with your core values and then see how vulnerable you feel and which vulnerabilities go with each task and do your vulnerable spaces ebb and flow. So there's your challenge for today. I will see you tomorrow. We're still gonna stick with core values this week and vulnerabilities. And tomorrow we're gonna talk about belonging, which is a little something I touched on earlier today too. Take care, everyone.